Hey there, Turgeon here, bringing you physics from afar. There were some questions about the waves and sound test. Let's get right into it. A lot of these were really related to the summary sheet. And the summary sheet had some old stuff that's been like discarded or isn't being covered this year. So most of this stuff about pendulums, you don't have to worry about the pendulum so much. Except maybe that's just an example of um, of <clears throat> a simple harmonic oscillator. And I'm seeing this and it says it's on the unit summary. Uh, it may be, but I thought I grayed that out. That was a maybe. We're kind of adjusting to a new MCAS this year and still making decisions based on really scant and um, sparse information from the state about what to include. So you don't have to worry about calculating anything particular about a pendulum. A standing wave, um, uh, go back to the notes on that. Um, they look a little different from this. This uh, my, my PC is, is crashed, so I can't get easy teach going. Um, but this is an old slide, and I think it's been updated. But <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't cover node and anti-node. All I want you to know is that a standing wave appears to stand still. It's due to uh, interference with reflected waves. So if you Google that, you'll see. But um, we discussed that in class, so hopefully people have notes that they can share with each other regarding that. And I think I also added to this slide in the notes. I think I added that. Um, when waves interfere, the only thing that's affected is the amplitude and not the wavelength. The amplitude and not the wavelength, and only at the moment where they intersect. Um, so a standing wave happens because of interference. You want to be able to draw the two waves going at each other like the wave interference worksheet. Um, and you judge how high those are based on what the what the based on what the two amplitudes were so i'm going to pause the recording and find an example of that so here we have an example very similar to what we did in class these two square waves were judging the new overlapping wave based on these heights so these are approximately let's say the scale is they're two centimeters long and one centimeter high then this is two centimeters high and still two centimeters long this one was maybe one centimeter high, and this one's two centimeters, but obviously below and into the negatives. That's destructive interference. You have like a positive one plus a negative two. Uh, we don't have to know what, oh, reflection and refraction. Again, ask around about the class notes from last week or the week before. You just want you to know that reflection is when a wave bounces off a surface, and refraction is when it bends through. It, it, in a surface as it goes into a new medium because of a change in speed. Um, light, for example, slows down when it goes into water. Light slows down when it goes into glass. By the way, what makes diamonds so spectacular is it's probably the substance that light slows down the most in. You don't have to know about the Doppler effect. Um, waves transport energy because they create an oscillation in from one successive particle to another. But they don't move those particles through space to a new location. Those particles just, just disturb each other like a chain reaction. Resonance is the phenomenon by which, I don't even know if I put this on the test, but it's it's when you have a driving frequency that's equal to the natural frequency of the object. So when we shook the spring, uh, it had many natural frequencies, but when uh, that student who I was remarking was pretty good at this, like really talented at this, when that student shook the wave at a particular frequency that matched the natural frequency, then the standing wave, then the, the um, spring wave started going like this, and it, achieved its natural vibration. Again, don't need to know node and anti-node. Um, this is really subtle, and I don't want to get into it too much. I've just heard so many music people say that, I've just heard people say, and I don't really know how much of it's physiology and how much of it is physics, but that people perceive sound differently in different media. 
and the only real difference is uh, how the sound travels more quickly so i think it could be how we're used i think the human ear is sensitive to different frequencies and those might come in slightly different proportions when the sound moves faster but no that's it's essentially theoretically the same frequency i covered this already standing wave and how standing wave is formed um the frequency doesn't change when the two waves interact only the amplitude and we don't need to know a node and anti-node and those were also not in your quizlet so that's a good thing to pay attention to now i'm going to grab the printout of the actual tests and i'm going to do that thing i'm going to do that thing that you want the teacher to do lots of vocab basically applic several multiple choice questions i'm seeing 28 questions uh including the required challenge which is three points um and numbers 11 to 23 are are multiple choice so there's a lot of application of words like mechanical longitudinal like, oh, which of these would be a mechanical wave? And you have to know it's something that's not a light wave. Um, know those attributes of sound that we learned also in the lab, um, where, you know, sound travels at a constant speed in all directions, it goes in as, as an expanding sphere, which means the amplitude decreases. Again, I keep seeing me mechanical waves and um knowing the difference between mechanical whenever you see mechanical think it's the opposite it's just knowing the definition and being able to answer a question that applies it to a particular situation um knowing that only electromagnetic waves can go through a vacuum and remember a vacuum is not the vacuum cleaner that cleans your house it's empty space knowing the difference between uh, longitudinal and transverse. The keywords are perpendicular or at right angles and parallel. Knowing the units for frequency, velocity, wavelength, know the definition of a wave. Um, knowing like what the equations mean, like there's a relationship between period and frequency. There's a relationship between velocity and frequency and wavelength. Um, knowing that when we classify waves, we're either classifying based on their motion, motion, which is longitudinal, see how I'm putting emphasis on that word, motion. Uh, longitudinal and transverse are classified based on the motion, and electromagnetic mechanical is classified based on the medium and whether or not they even need a medium. Just examples of simple harmonic motion. It's any cyclical motion that if you graph it, it would make a wave graph. Know all your wave parts, definitions, 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 quizlet, quizlet, quizlet. Know the definitions. Definitions, definitions. You're seeing me cross stuff out. Knowing wave speed for medium. So sound travels fastest through is it solids or liquids or gases you, you got to know that and the answer is that sound travels fastest through solids slowest through gases which is um, contrary to what most people think being able to draw and name the interference as two square waves approach each other so just pay attention to how tall they look um being able to plug into the equation v equals lambda f which will be given to you of course and be able to solve for v or lambda or f be able to produce the results from the lab where you're either drawing a wave that's high pitched low pitched high volume low volume um that means your the the amplitude is related to the volume and the number of waves per second is related to the pitch so the number of waves you're squeeze the number of waves you're squeezing into a small space if you're doing a lot you're creating a high pitch wave being able to draw the longitudinal wave draw the transverse wave and show a dot and show the particle motion 
and the wave motion, the motion of the wave itself. The motion of the wave itself is only one arrow because it goes through space. The motion of the particle is two arrows because it's showing that it's going in two directions, back and forth. Um, being able to use uh, t equals 1 over f and f equals 1 over t and being able to identify period and frequency. I'm putting my test down because that's it. Being able to identify period and frequency from given information. Like if I say that my vocal cords are vibrating 450 times per second, what did I just give you? Or if I say in two seconds my vocal cords vibrate 900 times, I'm giving you the information that you could use to either get a period or frequency. And if you calculate that it was in one second, it was 450 vibrations, that's a frequency. If you do one over 450, you'll figure out the um, you'll figure out the period, which is a really small time of like like 0.021 or something, 0 0.0021, something like that. Well, you just got a really exhaustive recap of everything that's on the test, as promised. By 8 p.m. Sorry if this was a little early. If there are more questions, I'm not going to record another video. This has been Physics from Afar. Take care.